is Sunita Passi here. How are you all doing today? So for today's show, we've got a great guest, yoga nidra expert, eco-activist, founder of Yoni Shakti, the movement, which is a movement to eradicate abuse of women in yoga, reclaim yoga as a tool for planetary healing and justice, Uma Dinsmore Tully. Now, Uma teaches UK, in the UK and also internationally. Um, her work is all about empowering teachers and individuals to discover their own response to the experience of yoga. And the big focus is on women and women's health. And she's very much inspired by Lala Shwari, um, whose work is all about compassion, common sense, knowledge, and resistance to authority. <laughs> Welcome, Uma. Welcome, Hi. thank you so much for inviting me, Sunita. Thank you. Thank nice you. Thank you. Delighted, to, delighted to spend some time with you. Now, Uma, what experience led you to working with, well, specifically Yoga Nidra, and I guess yoga as a whole platform? Okay, so that, to, to make a, a short answer, I first met Yoga in 1969 when I was a little girl. And there used to be a, a telly program on you on Thames TV in London. And I, my mum used to do it. So she would practice yoga and I would practice with her. And so that goes back a long way. So it was part of my life for a long time. And it wasn't until um, I got to college, I got teachers, you know, who were there, but I did it sort of out of the book from this TV series. And then I trained as a yoga therapist. But, you know, it wasn't until I was actually pregnant on my first son, who's now 21, but when I was a pregnant woman, I realized how yoga therapy could be really helpful for my experience of pregnancy, but that a lot of sort of standard yoga really wasn't up to the mark. So my special project when I was training as a yoga therapist was all about yoga for pregnancy. And since then, it's expanded into every other aspect of women's, women's health looking. That, so that sort of started me on that particular journey. Okay. And what, what kind of, um, what does your approach offer over and above, say, other modalities, the way that you do it? Because I know it's a very unique way that you've evolved and developed over the years. And that, you know, that's also, you know, there's, there's many women that come and te that, that, that study with you and guys as well. But I think it's predominantly women. Yeah, it's mostly women. And I'd say the reason people come and seek out this approach to yoga therapy is because it's very nurturing. It's very nourishing. And it's always guided by the individual. So there's nothing standard about it. And I think that's the thing that's really particular about, about yoga therapy in general. So you won't get, a, you know, the, the yoga therapist will always tune into the individual or the group experience with those individuals present. But um, yeah, and I think what I offer is I, I use a lot of yoga nidra. So there's a lot of rest. I see a lot of people very exhausted and a lot of women's health issues are really they're really exacerbated by exhaustion and so rest is a big part of it and the constructive rest of, uh, of yoga nidra very gentle movements but also movements that strengthen in a, it's a nourishing kind of it's all about nourishment and nurture and really supporting our health and well-being at every phase of life so that's that's and it's that mixture of movement i use uh, yoga nidra sometimes sound a little bit of mudra and um and uh, mantra and you know what what's mm -hmm. yeah so it's, it's that combination i think is a lot of elements that are present in many other ways but it's that, that particular combination i think is what people come looking for <laughs> so that that is that is uh, uh, that biggest sphere that's interesting you know with the training and what they're looking for now people also come to you for one-to-one -one zuma yeah so, so as a practitioner, your an experience with Uma. What do you do in the? What would you say you do in the field that others don't? Well, I think the key thing is that very often when I'm working with a client individually, um, you know, I'm listening to all the uh, the elements of of of, of their their well being at that time, their physical well being, emotional and psychic. But one of the things I usually do is to create with them a special yoga nidra practice that is basically unique so in listening to the people they'll you know somebody might explain about what's occurring in their life and we co-create a nidra so that means i listen to the words that the person says and then 
work that into their own special nidra so very often people will go away from the session with maybe breathing practices or relaxation practices or movement practices but they will mostly also take away a recording that has that's theirs basically and it's the right length for them it fits into their day and it's quite special i know people sometimes have them for years they have them on their phone or they download them on their computers and so it becomes something that they listen to every day and that that's that's i think that's the the unique ingredient <laughs> yeah, i love it's well, that's really about listening to people you know i really listen listening like like all all good practitioners you know mm. it's mostly about hearing where people really are yeah. and responding to that in a realistic way i don't like this idea sometimes people feel a bit guilty you know they avoid their yoga teachers or their ayurvedic practitioners in the yeah. because they're like oh my god i haven't done that thing that they told me to do yeah. I'm up and doing a 500 surya namaskars every morning or whatever it is and i'm like no let's make it realistic and doable because it's better to give something someone like a 15 minute practice to do or something and then actually have them do it than to say you've got to do an hour and a half and then have them feeling guilty i mean yeah. that's, that's I not absolutely no i i i <laughs> I'm, I'm totally with you there you know and um and, and what ends up doing is it, it takes the joy out of it all well, you know so, it so takes you the joy and then nobody does it nobody does the, it. Thing. the thing about yoga therapy right is that it only works if you actually do it mm. so you can go and receive a massage and that's lovely because you lie down and you have your bit fun, and you receive that in just being there mm. but with the yoga therapy you'll come and we will do the practice and we'll do that but basically if you want it to to make a change in your life or to support you you do have to get, you have to carry on <laughs> i feel my responsibility as a practitioner yeah. is actually to make it something that will bring you joy that you will actually want to do and if you're saying oh well, it's only 10 minutes 15 minutes i can manage that then you're more likely to say oh well i might do another round or i might do that extra thing and you're more likely to actually keep doing it and yeah. then you get the benefit yeah, yeah. Do you find um, with your practice that there are specific conditions that your clients come with? Oh, that's a good question. I mean, I'm mostly working with women. It's not exclusively women, but a lot of the issues that come are to do with women's life cycles. So I do a lot of work around supporting menstrual health mm -hmm. and menopausal health. Mm -hmm. And I've also worked quite a lot with fertility. So women seeking to conceive we've had challenges um, around pregnancy loss um, those kinds of things it's mostly to do with the female reproductive system mm -hmm. and um, increasingly also um, with menopause actually with women moving through menopause and wanting that to be like a positive experience because it gets a pretty bad rap you know yeah so no it, absolutely yeah no <laughs> I again align with you there I've, I've started running a webinar on menopause from the Ayurvedic perspective and yeah you know it's it's a completely it's a completely it's a, a mind shift as you know as to how we look at it it's absolutely we view it so beautifully and positively and it's this this movement into a new phase of life and but you're absolutely right it's it does get a it does get a poor it does get poor <laughs> thing off I think that yoga and, and Ayurveda, they're like sisters. They're very close. And, and a lot of the lifestyle suggestions and nutrition and the herbs and all of the, and the, and the daily routines that come through Ayurveda have personally helped me massively. And I see also, especially with menopause, because it goes on for so long. You know, you could be in menopause for, mm. for um, I'm going to open it with the clouds. I put this up because the <laughs> let it a bit more light in. Um, yeah. You could be going through menopause for, for maybe, you know, 10 years so it's you're in for the long haul so like like constant you know daily changes make a difference and that way i see people really able to embrace the challenges of menopause and really step into themselves and to what, what are some of the takeaways that you give women when they work with you specifically in this area what are just some of the key messages okay so the key message is about compassion and kindness to yourself mm -hmm. um actually making time to rest i would say is at the top of the list because mm -hmm. basically if you can't do that you can't do anything i mean when you feel tired everything will feel worse you feel depleted so i think the very top of the list is is to um to make time i mean i you know for yoga nidra and adequate sleep mm -hmm. you know most people are very underslept and so that helps and then gently to allow for there to be um I think the other take home is really 
to have real respect for the wisdom of the body. Mm -hmm. So I often teach women, yoga is very good for this because it kind of just gives you a pause time. It lets you settle in and allows you to really listen. So often women, we're taught not to really listen to our menstrual cycles, you know, for example. So, so or, or to, when you pay attention, the wisdom of the body is very great. So I teach sort of respect for that as a guidance system. So you don't have to keep looking outside. You actually, I'm seeking to empower people to be guided by what, what they feel arising in their own bodies. Mm. Some people, you know, you get so, so tired and you're so wired. You don't even notice how exhausted you are. Or women just think it's okay. They struggle with pain as if that's something that is just acceptable and, normal and it doesn't really need to be especially around menstrual pain <laughs> excuse me yeah. well, it's a uh, the yoga, now in the yoga community we you know some some people they, they they start their yoga path for all a whole manner of different reasons so yeah. when you when you look at your work your trainings also your practitioner work do you think it can be used to improve life um, and maybe even prepare for a better future? Yeah, absolutely. I see people often come to yoga because they want a change in their life mm. or they're not happy with what's going on or they're like, this isn't good enough. I don't, I, I'm just, I don't have any energy. I'm tired or I can't actually achieve goals or ambitions I want. And I think I see yoga as a major transformation. A lot of people come into maybe just a weekly yoga class or they show up for yoga therapy or maybe they do like a yoga teacher training course. And those points in people's lives are often like a, a turning point, like a transformation. Mm. Uh, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and, and that whole idea that, you know, well, you've already said that, that nobody's well-being journey is the same, that the way that you work is completely unique and individualized. Um, again, that very much aligns with, with Ayurveda, the way, the way that, that I work as well, in the sense that we've got this, this concept of the different body types, of the different doshas, which also yeah. gives us um, a diagnostic tool to help uh, weave our way through, you know, through that and, and, and learn a little bit more about each other. So, um, so really just, um, and then I, I wanted to just uh, learn a little bit more about your, your movement, but if we could just talk a little bit about this, um, about the health me measures, um, okay. but, yeah, health measures that you recommend, um, and then we'll get into the, um, the movement that you're really working on at the moment. So you're thinking about sort of health measures that support people's vitality and wellness i mean yes yeah and i think really very specifically to to really how that can support people at the moment with what's going okay. on so, yeah. well absolutely because we we find ourselves in a very strange time of great uncertainty mm -hmm. so what i've observed is one of the key ways that yoga can really help is in dealing with anxiety mm -hmm. anxiety and then then sleeplessness and they go together so i really feel that there's two kind of things that make a huge difference one of them is the yoga nidra practice and breath awareness working with breath as the vital force because we notice when we're in states of anxiety and and confusion and distress that the breath is really um you know disturbed so a lot of the practices i think that are most useful right now are those things which like ground us so in ayurvedic terms it's like people's vata is totally yeah, yeah that it is, yes. That's, we've got a lot of that out of balance at the moment. A lot of our balance. So I think grounding is really important. And yoga practices that bring you to the ground, you know, barefoot on the earth, breathing. Well, if you can get connected to the earth, it's, she, you know, she wants to nourish us. So I, I really have been sharing practices that help alleviate anxiety, you know, quieten down this aggravated vata kind of situation and allow people to feel much more centered like mm -hmm. slow it down, take a breath. So I've been doing these like free, like a public service announcement every day, mm -hmm. a free yoga nidra for half an hour that we do as a community. And that's the other thing, connection. Mm. The part of the way to feel less anxious is to feel connected, even if we're distant from people, keeping in connection, just having conversations is, is important. And But, you know, you don't want to overdo it because you can spend your life in front of your screen in Zoom meetings. So mm. balance mm. and groundedness, yoga practices that do that. That's, that's my fantastic point. wonderful so just um before we uh, before we say goodbye uma could you just tell the viewers a little bit more about the yoni shakti yoni shakti the movement 
um, okay. what, what is it about, how can people get involved, and then also just how they can contact you for all your amazing work. All right, so thank you for the opportunity to speak about this. So Yoni Shakti is source power, and I have to flash my book here. So I wrote this book called Yoni Shakti, A Women's Guide to Power and Freedom Through Yoga and Tantra. I actually wrote it in 2012. It's a very big fan book. Mm -hmm. And so it, it was due a relaunch because a lot of new, um, quite shocking information came out about, about abuses and, you know, financial improprieties and sexual violence and things within yoga communities, actually. So I've relaunched the book with new information and it's an opportunity to actually launch a much bigger campaign to raise people's awareness of how there is indeed, you know, gender-based violence and abuse within yoga teaching organizations, individual teachers. So it's about raising awareness of that so that we can then reclaim yoga as it is a tool for healing. Just like Ayurveda is a tool for healing and justice and freedom. So I have launched this movement, Yoni Shakti, the movement.com. We have a crowdfunding campaign which runs until the 5th of June. So if you want to support this work, it's an education and public awareness campaign mm -hmm. to change uh, uh, yoga education so that these things don't happen anymore. It's also representative of all the kinds of. Uh, gender-based violence and abuse that happens to women in the wider world so my trust is that if the good-hearted people of the yoga world can get together and sort our little corner of the web out and say enough is enough and we're going to sort this out then we we actually are able to to be part of a much wider campaign seeking for justice at every level you know, so that we can address structural racism and misogyny. It's a huge project. So I've got a very visionary idea that actually a trending my little piece of the web in this world is the yoga world. Well, I thank you personally. And, um, you know, I'm sure millions and millions of other people are saying, are saying the same thing. Yeah. Um, so that's 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 great and then just finally how do people contact you uma okay so yeah so that the, if you want to get in touch with the movement you go to yoni shakti the movement.com but my site um you can find me at yoni shakti.co co and that there's you can um book one-to-ones and that kind of thing with me so that's an easy way to find me um there thank you great. so much for giving thank you speak about this thank you it's thank a you very much thank you sunita keep up thank the work of keeping everybody well <laughs> thank you my dear and uh, we'll we'll have you back for longer next time absolutely yeah.